Hello guys, welcome back to Sand VFX. Today we are here with uh, another tutorial. Today we will be looking at animating time scale in Ray Fire. So here's sort of example on what we'll be working today. Oops, sorry, it just stopped. Let it be played again. Okay, so we have got some um, fragments that are exploding and they are also you know they are stopping and the camera is moving and then again they blast so this is this example that we'll be creating today and today we'll be looking into the animating uh, time scale in Rayfire so let's begin up let me just create our text first uh, as usual send VFX with uh, Arial Bold okay then add in a extrude modifier maybe about 15 amount okay that's good then we press the J key to turn off the selection bracket and F4 to turn on aged faces and then rotate it 90 degree by pressing the A key that is angle snap okay just 90 degree <coughs> okay so before fragmenting our object I would like to set up our scene with V-Ray for rendering uh, it's easy to set up at the first okay so let me just turn on global illumination and ambient occlusion and adapt to DMC and catmull roll also down to environment I want to turn on GI environment okay and put this to about somewhat kind of grayish color okay then let me go to material editor Okay. okay. I'll create a V-Ray material and choose the color a little lighter gray. And let me duplicate this one and let me name it white and then put the color to white. So I'll c apply this gray material to my text and then let me go ahead and create a V-Ray plane as well. V-Ray and plane and then apply this white material to my VA plane okay so with this I quickly set up the scene so we can just render and see what it looks like okay that's looking good so I did it at the beginning because once we fragment our objects our scene might be a little slower so sometime the scene might crash while adding the materials so I did it at first okay let me close this one then let me go ahead and go to Rayfire, open up Rayfire Floater. Okay, let me add my text to dynamic impact object, and go to fragmentations. And I want the iteration to about 400, with uh, 15 variations. And I also want to set the tessellation to two, so we'll get a little more detail into our fragments. And then let me fragment my impact object. Okay. Okay, so we have got our pieces. Okay, you can see that we have got some details due to the tessellation into our fragments. Okay. Okay, now let me create my ray fire bomb to explode my text. So for that, let's go to helper, down to ray fire, and create our ray fire bomb. Okay. Let me position it right here. Okay. Let's go to the bomb settings and set the frame to start frame to about 6 it's the minimum frame we, you cannot go beyond this so we'll just set it to 6 and then we'll just increase the range uh, but before uh, that we cannot see the range of our bomb so we'll have to enable that from your options and so bombs range so we can see the bomb range and I'll increase this up maybe about this size okay that's good. Okay, uh, all the settings will pretty much be fine for this part. Okay, so now I'm gonna need to add my bomb to my simulation property right here. Add it. Then I have all my fragments into my dynamic object list. So I just deactivate my static dynamic object and then activate by force so that 
all these pieces will be only activated if when the bomb starts at the frame 6 okay okay so let's do a quick preview on how it looks okay it's calculating okay so our fragments which are inside the bomb range are exploding okay okay let me pause that now stop that and let me turn on home grid as ground so that our fragments won't go beyond this uh, grid line the next thing um, the main thing that we are looking today is this feature called time scale so the time scale features allow us to slow down or fast our simulations so let me just put this to about maybe 0 0.2 and run my simulation okay let's wait for a while okay now you can see that our simulation is a lot more slower than it was previously If I bump this up to about let's say five, and then do another simulation, you can now see that our fragments will explode a much much faster than before. So this is the very powerful feature inside Rayfire, and this feature is also animatable, but it cannot be directly animated from here we'll need a uh, additional helper to animate this feature so let me go to helper rayfire and here we have got rf rayfire physics so creating this helper this helper will allow us to animate our time scales and other features which are not directly animatable animatable from this rayfire U ui okay once i created the uh, rayfire physics helper I need to add it to my simulation properties. Let me add that. Okay. Then I can auto key, set key. Oh, okay. Or you can just move these things right here. And then, okay. You can see that now it has been animated. So this red button means it has a keyframe. So this shows that time scale has is animatable. So we'll now animate it in such a way so that our simulation will look good okay so let me just delete all this first first since we have our bomb exploding from frame 6 so we'll set a key at about frame 8 and we'll just set it at just 1 okay let me move this to 0 frame and maybe about at 12 frame I'll reduce it to 0 0.01 so that our simulation is extremely slow it's almost like it will stop then I will uh, let me first increase my frames okay 150 and let me go to about frame 80 and then again set a key just clicking there you can set a key and maybe about frame 87 I'll bump this up to 1 okay now I'll do a simulation let's see okay so let's wait for a while till then I'll just pause my video okay. here you can see that all these middle frames our simulation is extremely slow okay and after 85 frames it is faster okay let it be played till our last okay I just set it to 100 frames so let me set this to 150 so that the simulation will happen till 150 frames and let me re-simulate it okay so our simulation is completed so now you can see how it looks okay it is slowing down and then after a certain frame it is fasting up okay the next thing is setting up our camera so maybe I'll just put it like this and press the control C key to create a camera from the view so that we can see now our view we changed to our camera 001 let me go to top view okay and select my camera with its target 
and then auto key okay let me go to about frame 8 okay maybe about 10 and then set a key or maybe let's move it a bit and then let me go to about frame 85 or 84 and then let me just move it at just the middle let me see how my view is looking okay and now let me see how my camera animation is okay it's looking good okay so I've set up my camera animation as well so the next thing is to render out our scene go to render setup common you can choose the active time segments choose your desired size and then go to save it I prefer T file you can also save it in T file okay anything save it and also store alpha channel it might be really useful I almost every time I store alpha channel okay and then you can just hit render hey okay. once the rendering is done mm, so I'm here in After Effect I just import uh, my render files I did previously let me open them up straight on matted and drag it and create a new composition okay, okay now here we have our simulation you can see our background is transparent let me just turn this down to half background is transparent so I'll create a new solid okay and set the color as this floor color and put it below so that we'll have kind of endless background okay just just to make it uh, let me go to our final quality okay it's looking good now so to make it look a little more better I'll add in some optical flares so let me create a new solid again this is just the extra part you don't need to do all these or you can do this on your own okay let me add in optical flares okay then let me turn the mode to add Oops, sorry okay here we go now let me go to options preset browser and let, me, let us go to motion browser sorry motion graphics here I've got some cool presets you can use any of them and um, hit OK let me move it a little back OK and also duplicate this one and for this one I'll just put it at this place OK we can also reduce the opacity bit okay the next thing we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and then add in a four color gradient to this adjustment layer and I want to put this just below our optical flares okay you can choose any colors but I'll just leave it to default and the next thing we'll set the trans uh, mode to add okay now it is too dark so we are going to reduce the op opacity but remember not the opacity of our full color gradient but the opacity of our adjustment layer what's the difference you can see if I reduce it will also reduce all of our image details so we can reduce the opacity of our adjustment layers maybe about 25 okay so it will give a little bit of color tint to our scene okay so you can just play around with these uh, optical flares a little more just to make it look a little more better okay okay and then you can just add to render queue and render okay that's it I hope you guys enjoyed um, don't forget to subscribe and if you want to talk to me you can just like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter um, more tutorials coming ahead so stay tuned guys till then have a great time